Okay, let's talk about monitoring events on our system. So whenever all Windows systems maintain event logs, and whenever anything interesting or noteworthy or, you know, harmful happens on your system, it will create an entry in the event log. Now we can view this from a few different areas. Let's start by opening up our event viewer. So I'm going to go to tools and event viewer right here. All right, we'll maximize this so we can see it a little better. Now, each Windows system is going to maintain its own event logs. You don't necessarily have to go from one system to another to view them, however. You can do uh, subscriptions, which will allow you to have, let's say, this computer go out and grab logs from... Uh, from other systems so you can review them all in one place. There's actually another way we can do that as well. So we're going to hold off on that because I want to show you another tool for doing that. But let's start by looking at our Windows logs. So we're going to expand this one right here. And we have five logs here. So the application log is where any applications are going to write information. And you'll see here we have information items, which are, hey, this is just happened, um, that you might want to know, it's no big deal. We have warnings, which is something that we probably want to take a look at because that may come back to bite us if we don't. And then we have errors. And errors mean, oh my gosh, the world ended, or at least this particular thing thinks, oh my gosh, the world ended. Errors are not always major catastrophes. Um, but it is something you definitely want to look at and see if it's a problem. If you are reviewing the event log, odds are it's because you're troubleshooting something, so you're going to start with your warnings and your errors. Now remember, the application log is where applications are going to write things. If we're actually troubleshooting, the most common place for us to start troubleshooting is here in the system, and this is where the operating system records things. So if we have a stop error here, it means something's wrong with the operating system. We have a, If we have a stop error here in the application log, it means something was wrong with an application. So a um, couple of different levels of importance there. So the system and the application log are the ones that get written to far and away more than anything else. The setup log is, well, basically the log of uh, what happened when you set up the system. Security is going to record logons by default, and that's going to be about it. Um, when you do security monitoring, you actually can set up a lot more auditing. So you can audit file level access, you can audit log on, log off, you can audit uh, privileged uh, use of privileged permissions. I mean, there's all different kinds of things you can audit, and that's all going to come in here to the security log. And we'll deal with that a little bit more when we're talking about security in more detail. Um, just one word of caution here. You don't want to turn on too much security auditing because it can actually fill up your logs. In fact, let's take a look at this right here before we jump too much farther in. Let's right click on a log and go to properties. So this tells you our log path, the log size, when it was created, modified, and engaged. This is the important thing. What's the maximum log size? How big do we let this thing go before we pull the plug on it? And when we stop it, what happens? And that's this down here. When the maximum event log size is reached, what do we do? So uh, override events as needed basically means when that fills up, I'm going to overwrite the older event and it's going to be lost. And so I'll just kind of have this rolling log. Um, and in some cases, that works fine. But if we don't want to lose those, we have two other options here. So this one right here, do not overwrite events. We use that when we don't want to lose any event logs, uh, entries, ever. We want to maintain it so that we can go back and we can review what happened at a later time. Um, this is for people who want to keep records forever. So what happens here is we have to manually clear the event logs, which means we got to stay on top of maintaining them and checking, you know, What's our log size? What's our, we've got a uh, log size. What's our maximum log size? And we've got to do this on a regular basis and then clear logs as needed. This option here is the middle road. When the archive log or when the log is full, we'll uh, archive the log. We won't overwrite it. So basically when it fills up, it'll automatically archive it, which means it'll save it to another log file.
and then it'll start a new log. Now, the downside of that is that if you're not paying attention, logs can fill up your hard drive and crash your operating system. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, but this keeps you from having to manually do that. All right, let's talk about uh, clearing the log. You've got an option right here to clear the log. Let me leave this to where it was. I'm going to clear the log. And my options are I can save it, and this is going to allow me to save the log file out, or I can just clear it. Now, the types of logs that we typically save more than any others are security logs when people are paranoid about security. So if I want to do that, I'm going to click Save and Clear, and then that'll save it out, and I can choose where this goes, and I'm going to change save it. I'll just save in my documents. Uh, test security log. There we go. And so that will save out my file for me and then clear my log. Apply, OK, and there it goes. So we had a handful of things here that are recorded just in the last few minutes um, since, well, I'm looking at within the last seven seconds, I had this many security event logs. So you can see how fast these things can fill up. All right, I can also clear the log, by the way, by right-clicking and clearing the log from here. All right, let me go back to my system log. So, let's say I'm trying to troubleshoot a problem here. Um, remember, information items are pretty generic. Something happened. It's just an FYI. If I select an entry, it will tell you down here in the details what that entry is about. And then down here, it will give you a little more information. It's kind of falling off my screen. So, the log name, the source, the event ID. Um, what level it is, information warning, critical, or oh my gosh, the earth ended. Um, the computer that it happened on and uh, when it was logged. Let's see if we can find something a little more interesting. So I'm going to right click and I can filter the current log. And this will allow me to choose what level of things that I want. So this is my event level. Let me look at warnings, errors. I don't want information. I'll do critical too. Uh, logged at any time. Um, I can filter by task category or keywords or whatever. And when I hit OK, that'll filter it down to showing me just that information. So let me look at this time service error right here. This tells me what it is. System times needs to be changed by zero seconds. Well, that's dramatic. Um, so it will give me the information about what it is and then the event ID and the time source. Now, the, or the, the event ID and the source right here. So event ID 34 time service. Now, this is useful when I go to try to track down what this error is. So um, if this doesn't give me a bunch of information, enough information to resolve my problem right here, can also go to my details, which will show it to me in an XML view if I want. We'll normally just stick with the general. Um, if this doesn't give me enough information, then what I can do is I can go out and Google this. And when I go out and Google this, now, Bing is not a great search engine. I don't like it that great how or that well. However, I will say this. Bing tends to give you better search results if what you're searching is uh, things that you might find in the Microsoft TechNet database. The TechNet database is an online list of articles maintained by Microsoft, and they have a ton of information there, and it's really, really great. So Bing may actually give you better search results in this instance than Google will but use either one you want. Now, here's what you need to do. You need to search for the operating system, the event ID, and the event source. And make sure you include all of those things. And when you start pulling up articles, double check and make sure that they are relevant to the operating system, the event ID, and the source. Because Microsoft will recycle event IDs. So event ID 34 from the time service might be different than event ID 34 from the net logon, which might be different from uh, the iSCSI event ID. Um, so you need to make sure that you include all of the correct information. And then you'll find 
Ideally, what you're looking for is TechNet articles. You can sometimes find user groups who will give you information as well. But in my personal experience, I've gotten the best feedback, the best information from TechNet articles. Okay, so I can look at my event logs. I can filter my event logs. I can... Um, search for information based on things found in my event logs also remember to check the date right so if something happened let's see today as i'm recording this is march 5th so if i'm seeing an error or warning back here from february 25th probably not relevant however these two here that both happened earlier today they might be relevant except that i don't care about the clock synchronization but other than that, you want to find things that are relevant to what you're trying to troubleshoot. That's where in your filtering. So to clear the filter, we can clear our filter here, or we can right-click and clear the filter either way. Uh, and then we can refilter here, as well as by right-clicking. So it's Microsoft. we got to have more than one way to do things, right? Two other things I want to cover real quick here. Um, the applications and services logs. Now, these are going to be logs specific to certain applications or services. This is different than the application log. The application log is kind of the generic one that any third-party uh, provider can write to. But Microsoft has some that are specific for the services that it runs. So the directory service, the DNS server, Internet Explorer, Windows PowerShell, uh, Active Directory Web Services. Uh, we can look for, if we're trying to troubleshoot something specific to a, um, I just lost my train of thought. If we're trying to uh, troubleshoot something related to a specific service. There we go. I got the sentence out. If we're trying to record something specific to or related to a specific service, we can come in here and look at those exact things. So that becomes very useful as well. So one more thing, and that is close this and go back to our server manager. Now, I said I'm not horribly excited about the subscriptions. I understand you know we can bring everything together in one place, and that's useful. But we already kind of have that right here. So you'll see I have all of my services. I have my local server. I have all servers. And in each one of these, I have an events. So if I go to my local server events, it will show me events related to my local server. And then I want to look at any error events related to my local server or any warning events related to my local server. And then I can set my time period here. So this will allow me to view events related to my local server. But what about other servers? Well, all of my servers that I'm managing are going to be grouped into these different roles. So I want to look at DNS events. And this is going to give me DNS events. I'm going to need a longer time period. Um, let's do within the past 24 days. I can't go back that far. I can do one in 24 hours, or I can only go back one day. All right, so I can't go back that far. Um, but um, it will give me current information for all of my DNS servers. Now, the trick is they have to be ones that are managed by a server manager here. If you remember, we covered in another video that I can go to manage add servers and I can add an additional server to be managed here, which means its event logs will now be picked up. It'll be grouped here by roles. It'll also be in the all servers or I can create other server groups. We covered that in another video, so you can go back and check that out. But I can look at my events there. Now you did see the limitation. I can go back one day. I can't go back much farther. So if I want to go back much farther, then I'm looking at either using subscriptions or uh, remotely accessing. One more thing, and then I promise I'll stop. If we go to 
tools and event viewer subscriptions are where we can set up subscriptions and our windows logs here are forwarded events those will come from other systems you can also have right here your event viewer local I can also right click and connect to another computer so if I have another computer on my network that I have administrative access to or at least the ability to read the event logs of that I can connect to that computer and look at its event log remotely um, in addition to setting up forwarders who will automatically forward events. All right, it just kind of depends on how you want to work. Connecting to another computer remotely is going to give you more flexibility. It is also, however, going to use up more resources on that system when you do it than if you just have it forwarding specific events um, when you want them. All right. So hopefully that gives you an idea about how we can use Event Viewer to track what's going on in our systems and then using that information to diagnose and troubleshoot issues we may be having with our systems.